Greetings and salutations. My name is Michael Schwann, and today we are checking out Dragon's Dogma 2, which, I I mean, it's over 10 years now since the first Dragon's Dogma, and people are like, oh my god, we finally got more Dragon's Dogma! But I think one of the problems that we have with Dragon's Dogma is that Dragon's Dogma is a game that didn't do super well when it came out. Um, and there was, there even still is some people complaining about some aspects of the original Dragon's Dogma, mostly especially that it doesn't have any type of fast travel system or even like a, a buy a carriage to take you to the next town and then that gives you a loading screen so that you don't have to just physically run there. Um, and it's also had a couple of updates over the years. And I forget what the uh, most recent um version of it's called because the version that you buy now has a bunch of like quality of life updates in it and stuff like that so like it's a much better game now than when it first released um and the game is very very often on a massive sale we're talking like six bucks for the entire thing right and so it's a really easy game to just like pick up and play and a lot of people as athena just expressed uh it is incredibly good one of the things that a lot of people will give it a lot of credit for is the combat system in a lot of ways the kind of like visceral nature of its combat system in that you will get beaten and batted around by monsters and it not in a ragdoll kind of way but in a way that feels tangible um you can also jump onto monsters and sometimes those monsters will fucking jump and fly around with you on them and it also has a really unique magic system in that magic feels grand it feels impactful and large and substantial and so over the years dragon's dogma got more and more and more of a fan base behind it until capcom was like yeah sure i guess we'll do another one you all better fucking buy it though because none of you bought the first one when it came out uh and it seems to be that the general vibe around dragon's dogma 2 is largely positive that people are looking forward to it and it is largely expected to be a pretty sizable success so, let's see what Dragon's Dogma 2 is all about. I'm going to start with the first trailer for Dragon's Dogma 2, which was a, just shy of a year ago in May. This was at a state of play or something like that. So, seeing a lot of the things that we talked about, being mounted on monsters, environmental effects, big magic. Ugh. That is most unfortunate, but it doth not release thee from thy fate. Also, you know, just a note, like, big, big props to Capcom for this. This is the first trailer. This is when they showed it off. And they showed up with Dragon's Dogma 2 with just like a minute and a half of basically just raw gameplay. Now, it could be pre-rendered gameplay. Very likely was to make it look a little bit smoother and run a little bit smoother. But they just showed up. We're like, here's the fucking game. It's out in a year. Buy it if you want. Like, very, very cool. Because I feel like so often now we're seeing games be showed off that are just obfuscated for the sake of trying to like in a way like hide the actual product where's that shot of them like stabbing the shit out of the griffin right here they're on a griffin right here come on work with me frames they are up in the sky by the way i just want to make sure that that is nice and clear they are holding on to this griffin stabbing the fucking shit out of its neck 
I don't know what happens. Uh, do you just die if you fall? Like, <laughs> like I feel like your hope is that it goes towards the ground and you can get off because this is a bad position to be in. But all right. Speaking of gameplay, this is a deep dive from the Tokyo Game Show in September of last year. Yes. Did they just turn that ogre into a bridge? Okay. Hello everyone, I'm Hideaki Itsuno, the director of Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2 is a narrative-driven action RPG set in an immersive fantasy world designed to place player choice at the heart of the gameplay experience. The action gameplay is designed to challenge your creativity, and although this is a single-player adventure, AI-controlled companions will accompany you throughout the experience. Today, I'd like to show you a little of what you can expect from the world of Dragon's Dogma 2 with this new gameplay footage. In Dragon's Dogma 2, up to three AI-controlled beings called pawns can join you on your adventures. Players can choose from four starting vocations that determine how they will play. Of course, you will be able to change your vocation at any time by visiting vocation guilds. For now, let's look at the fighter vocation. Wielding a one-handed sword and shield, the fighter excels in melee combat. Use your tank. As a fighter, you can cut down enemies with a sword and protect yourself and your party using your shield. <laughs> As we keep going, we can see some harpies in the distance. As an archer, you'll be better suited to take down enemies above you. Let's see what they can do. The archer is a vocation that uses a bow and arrow to attack enemies from a distance. Speaking of a mage flying arsenal, around. Including exploding or blighting arrows. You can also aim at your enemies like a third-person shooter. Floating like a character out of Freerin. The monsters of Dragon's Dogma 2 behave organically in the world around them, and will even react to players by using their wits against you. Next, I would like to show you the mage in action. Mages excel at long-range magical attacks, as well as healing and support spells that bolster your party with various enchantments to give allies an advantage in battle. The more advanced and powerful the magic is, the longer the incantation will take. Jesus! In addition to the pawns you adventure with, you will occasionally act with other inhabitants of the world. What's this? We're trapped! Oh, thank you. You want to smash the rest of the... The barrier, Mr. Troll. Lastly, let's take a look at the thief. As a thief, you use daggers to strike at your enemies, relying on agility and quick attacks. Oh damn, that was sick. Use swift step to quickly move away from enemies after an attack. The key strategy for the thief against massive monsters is to find openings and cling on to the enemy to deal damage. Fighting head-on is always an option, but it's a good idea to utilize the environment around you while engaging with enemies. Hey, you clear the way. your chosen vocation, diverse terrains, and the particular monster you're up against, each encounter challenges players and their party to use their creativity to succeed. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Two nations prosper in the world of Dragon's Dogma 2. Vermund, the human kingdom, and Batal, the land of Bistrin. 
In Vermund, the Arisen who slay the dragon have ruled as kings for generations. This land of lush meadows and rolling hills is ripe for exploration. In contrast, Batal is a rugged canyon nation with a city built on the site of ancient ruins. It is home to the Bistrin and their unique culture. The nation of Batal offers players a different experience from the human kingdom with diverse environments to explore and monsters to encounter. In your adventures, you might come across people who call out to you. Oh, have you some business with the apothecary, sir? Other no, times, you by. might receive quests from people who you aid. Thank heavens. Thought I'd never make it. If I might be so bold as to impose upon you again, would you be willing to accompany me to the cenotaph and safeguard me from harm? Pawns with knowledge of a quest may be able to guide you to the right location but it is up to the player to decide whether to follow them or not. Pawns support you throughout your adventures and may come to your aid when you are in trouble. Oh yeah? Wow, good catch! To complete your quests, you can ride ox carts to travel to major locations. But be aware, as you might get attacked en route to your destination, and have oh, to hell. decide how to tackle the situation. During the ride, you can choose to close your eyes to quickly arrive at your destination. Time is ever passing, even while riding an ox cart, and the environment around the player constantly changes. Nighttime is especially dangerous. It's dark. With no light to eliminate your surroundings, you will be enveloped in pitch black darkness where you can't even see your feet. Also, there are dangerous monsters that only appear at night, so you need to be careful when adventuring in the dark. If you have a camping kit, you can find a campsite to spend the night and recover your health. But you can get your shit kicked in in the middle of the night, too. Good evening, Arisen. Tis the honor of my life to share your journey, Arisen. To wrap up, I'd like to introduce some advanced vocations that become available as you progress in the story. The Mystic Spear Hand combines magic attacks and weapon-based physical attacks. Well, that looks fucking sick. A good all-rounder, they use their duo spear at close range and magic at long range. They can also use magic to block an enemy's movement or throw multiple items at once. The magic archer the is a vocation that, that further specializes in long-range attacks with magical arrows. On top of healing and providing support to your allies, they can learn a skill that releases a powerful attack over a wide area in exchange for reducing their own maximum HP. Oh, damn. And of course, there are other unique vocations you can look forward to. We have a playable version of Dragon's Dogma 2 at the Tokyo Game Show Capcom booth. Depending on the choices they make, each player can experience very different playthroughs. We're very much looking forward to the impressions of those who get a chance to play. Dragon's Dogma 2 is being developed for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and Steam. Please stay tuned for more information. Thank you. Very cool. Very cool. The advanced... No. Don't need no ox cart. I got my own fast travel. Just jump on the back of this rock and call it a day. There's a rock that flies over this area from time to time. Sweet. Sounds like a cab. All right. So this is the main trailer back from the end of November. At last, the bell has tolled on the age of the console. The return of the Sovereign. Never seen Sovereign spelled that way, but all right. Welcome, Arisen. 
Maybe pawns have long Man, Capcom's graphics are getting so good. Like, they made their own engine with the RE engine, and they've just been Learn slaying it with it. This world you must protect. We ask that all be spared the horrors of the fell dragon. From this moment forth, thou art arisen. Here's my chance. If you're discovered, yours won't be the only head that rolls. What is your purpose here? When twas all but certain that her son would take his father's place, word reached the castle that the Arisen had been found. Pitiable Arisen. Why dost thou fight? Arisen. Believe in your own destiny, Arisen. Show me the path thou wouldst walk. You're gonna have to fight that dragon, it's gonna suck. If ye intend to do what I could not, and fell the dragon true. I would gladly pass all to the wisdom I possess into your hands. That was a great trailer. Like, that was such a, a like, such good energy in that trailer. Oh my God, that was awesome. Like, oh. all right, this is the action trailer from the very end of January. Very captivating trailer. Oh, you gotta. You got a growth there. I make no mistake. The dragon will appear before you oh. when the tide is come. Look out, Arisen! We're under attack! Can you switch vocations? It definitely looked like they went from mage into mystic spearhand into like a thief of some sort just now on their back. Wow, that was fucking cool. You must be able to switch vocations because they're bouncing from class to class right now. Yeah, they did say you could change, but I didn't mean that that was like active switching, right? Let me up there. Hold fast to your strength of will, Arisen One. Those who can be of aid to you will reveal themselves in time. Thy will, thy soul, these are all the means thou hast to carve thy path anew. Damn. Yet your wicked schemes will avail you not. Watching one. This game's gonna make you feel like the ultimate badass. All right, so this is a Welcome to Dragon's Dogma 2 presented by Ian McShane. This just came out three days ago. So I don't know what this is, but it was on the official Capcom YouTube page. So Behold, a world touched by magic, a symphony of myth and reality. An everlasting saga of hearts set ablaze. Lend me a moment, and I'll tell you a story of a fantastical realm. For untold eons, a dragon has plagued the world. Its ominous shadow looms over the lands, a dreadful creature of chaos and awe, with tales of its cruelty echoing far and wide. No mortal would dare to dream of challenging the dragon in single combat, yet there is one who must. 
In a legendary tale doomed to repeat across the ages, Roy Orlik. the dragon chooses a worthy champion from each generation. Wrenching the beating heart from their chest and forging a being known as the Arisen. This hero, marked by fate and burdened by their lost humanity, must rise from the trappings of ordinary life and answer the call to take up arms in search of the dragon who stole their heart. Can you romance the but dragon the path at the of end? The Arisen is not a solitary journey, for they are granted access to the rift, the thread connecting worlds. I see you recognize my word, Arisen. Where they can summon mystical beings from parallel realities, the loyal and hardworking pawns, masters of archery. Wielders of potent spells and skilled in the arts, which of apparently, sword thankfully, and don't hurt your friends. The pawns become the arisen's companions and confidants. I hope you slept well, Master. As they go forth on their journey together, players always trying to seduce the dragon. I mean, why not? You know, hey, can you stop destroying the whole damn world? What if I gave you love? In pursuit of the beckoning dragon. The Arisen and their pawns set foot across two nations, as disparate in terrain as they are in their ways of life. In Vermund, a fertile land cradled by alpine peaks and rolling hills, the fortress city stands as a bastion of prosperity and security. Cascading waterfalls and serpentine rivers flow throughout the countryside feeding into fruitful farms where a feeling of abundance permeates the fresh air. Just above the capital city, Vernworth Palace rises proudly. You are approaching the gates of Vernworth. Here, the Arisen is traditionally revered as the Sovereign, a monarch crowned by destiny and looked upon as a champion, Not protecting the land from the dragon's scourge. Beyond Vermin's verdant embrace lies Batal, the nation of Bistran, a land of unforgiving deserts. Its shifting sands and jagged canyons require creative thinking to traverse. You can steer the arrow, With fun. gondolas connecting precarious outposts. Here, the Arisen is not an esteemed sovereign, but an outsider. Their pawn companions believed to be a source of grave misfortune. Patal's rulers are not of human lineage, but rather Bistran priestesses who worship the lambent flame. For the Bistran believe its sacred fires shield them from the calamity of the dragon. Meanwhile, outside the reaches of human and Bistran, hidden within the depths of the forest, an ancient sect of elves resides in seclusion speaking in a tongue known only to them and avoiding contact with other races. Until now. On their journey, the Arisen will navigate through conflicts between species and the complexities of culture, faith, and history in each land. The choices the Arisen makes will shape not only their future and that of those with whom they interact, but the future of the world itself. The Arisen's Odyssey is fraught with peril. For oh, the damn. world is home not only to human and beastren, but to all manner of monsters. Going for a ride. Oh, that's not the kind of ride we want to take. Holy shit. Pawns. Ow! Each step of the way is marked with blood and sweat shed in the, the face fuck are those? of the Oh, he cut adversaries. its tail off. The harrowing shrieks of harpies reverberate through the mountains that was fucking and canyons. Cool. Resourceful goblins lurk in the shadows, skillfully adapting to the terrain and waiting to ambush in groups. The footsteps of lumbering golems animated by powerful charms shake the earth and rattle the arisen's bones and when the sun sets 
what we get, we can expect a busy night. Skeletons, ghosts, and undead rise from their slumber. A single undead, murmuring to itself a drift in memories of its living past, is a haunting sight. But a horde of undead, united in a mindless nocturnal frenzy, is a truly I like how you can see how long the spell is taking because the like runic circle the is closing. Foes are monsters most only see in myths. The Minotaur's trampling hooves. The Medusa with its petrifying gaze. And the Dullahan's ghastly severed head will Please, no. strike fear in even the most stout-hearted. But with every exhilarating encounter, the hero must think creatively. That's sweet. It will take cleverness as well as courage to conquer the three heads of the Chimera, slay the soaring griffin, and overpower the bronze giant, Talos. Each victory emboldens the arisen spirit and prepares them for the inevitable showdown with the indomitable dragon. The culmination of both their destinies. Welcome to Dragon's Dogma 2. Oh, it's fucking sick. You know, to Dragon's Dogma I'm just getting the title card up here. You know, one of the things that's like really crazy about the this year when it comes to video games, right, is that 2024 is going to be really interesting when it comes to how things shake out by the end of the year, right? We did originally have an expectation that the Switch 2 was going to be the big things that released this year, and then it turns out that that's not happening until 2025. And then PlayStation came out a couple of months ago and was like, hey, we're not releasing any first party PlayStation games at all in 2024. The soonest one's going to be 2025. And we're kind of just like floating along. There's not a whole lot that's coming out after after this, like after the end of March, we have like Stellar Blade in April, uh, Hell, Hellblade 2 in May, and then Wukong. Black Myth Wukong in August, but otherwise there's just this big void when it comes to like large releases, right? But the start of this year has been a very strong, like very, very strong. If you are a single player RPG fan, because we got things like Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, Persona 3 Reload, Unicorn Overlord, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. We're now getting Dragon's Dogma 2. We're going to get ready to check out just after this video. We're going to be checking out Rise of the Ronin. We're going to be checking out, um, the, there's there's another one that's coming out or did come out. But yeah, like a whole bunch of single player RPG experiences in a year where there is just almost nothing else happening. Like I, I, the only other like major game that's come out is like Helldivers 2, right? But otherwise everything else has just been games like this. And it's I'm really interested to see what that's going to mean when we get to the end of the year, when we get to like the game of the year awards, right? Because there's just these games and nothing else. And it's like, is this going to be the year where we see something like Dragon's Dogma 2 or Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth or Persona 3 Reload win a game of the year, a, an award that traditionally does not go to games like this? I don't know. It'll be really interesting. I mean, I guess Elden Ring won uh, in 2022, right? So, you know, meh, 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 meh. but yeah, very, very interesting. It's going to be crazy to see where it goes. And I guess Baldur's Gate 3 won last year, but that was, Baldur's Gate 3 was such an upset compared to the way that the gaming landscape had been for half a decade plus, right? So it's going to be really interesting to see how this goes. I hope Dragon's Dogma 2 is a, a large success. Capcom has just been rocking it game after game after game lately. They did, like, kind of trip over their own feet just a little bit with Exoprimal because they were just, like, running too fast. But they've just been 
banger after banger after banger. Just all of the Resident Evil remakes, as well as the new Resident Evil games, 2, 3, 4 remake, Village, and just Resident Evil 7 itself. Um, and then looking at like what they've done with like Monster Hunter and Street Fighter. And they just, they, they, they're kind of just like rock and house really hardcore right now. Um, and it's great to see that that appears like it's going to keep happening. I mean, they've also been doing like really good jobs bringing some of their older games forward. They've been doing remakes or remastered ports of like a lot of the Phoenix Wright games and, and the Mega Man games. And they're like, yeah, we're just, uh, we're just going to make games. We're going to make good games. You know what happens? We make money when we do that. And that's awesome. And I'm here for it. And I'm excited to see what they do next. We got Monster Hunter Wilds coming out in early 2025. Well, I shouldn't say early 2025. I should say 2025. Um, and who knows what else Capcom has planned in the meantime, right? So yeah, Capcom really deserves some of the accolades for the recent stuff because they've just been doing good work and not been being shitbags about it. And that's awesome. And I really hope a lot of these other companies are taking notes from Capcom because it would be very easy for other companies to just do the same thing that Capcom's doing and also make money, and then we all win because we get to have a bunch of really great games and really great experiences, and they get to make a lot of money, and they also get to win a lot of awards or recognition, and it's just like, yes, this is how it should go, right? But anyway, that's Dragon's Dogma 2. Love the look at it. No big scandals. Who knew, right? I know. Weird. Crazy. Imagine what happens when you don't allow your higher-ups to just, you know, sexually assault their employees. Looking at you, Ubisoft. Anyway. So, yeah. Um... That's it. That's Dragon's Dogma 2. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you played the first Dragon's Dogma, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, are you trying to play through the first one before jumping into this one? You don't need to, by the way. But there's no requirement for that whatsoever. But, you know, I'm sure a lot of people would like to do so. If you are, what are your thoughts up to this point? Did you finish it? How did you feel? Did you play it? 10 years ago or did you play it today and how do you feel about it compared to the rest of the field either now or you know whatever your point of comparison is let me know leave your thoughts down in the comments below or catch up with us on social media twitter threads instagram blue sky we got a discord you can join links to all of that down in the description but otherwise this video was recorded live i'd love for you to join us we do stream on twitch and i'd love to see you there otherwise if you enjoyed this video please leave it a like if you want to catch future videos please subscribe to the channel if you do watch one of the other videos on the channel or if i see you in the live stream Thank you and enjoy.